Hello friends, I'm Kayla. At the beginning of every year, I post a video like this, where I talk about my most anticipated releases of the next calendar year. I like to act like I'm going to read them all and that I am capable of doing so. Alas, I am not. So in this vlog, I wanted to read four books that I was anticipating for 2023. And I was trying to choose like how I should pick the ones I'm most interested in the ones that are the most popular. And I decided no, let me go with the least popular. Maybe there are some diamonds in the rough. Maybe there are some books that didn't get enough hype. I'm going to read them and love them and then force them all upon you. So we're going to do a quick scroll through my Goodreads sorted by date and just look at everything and find the four with the lowest amount of ratings. Starting out, we've got some with hundreds of thousands of ratings. 7,000, 1,000, 68,000. Okay, there's one right away. 534 ratings for The Insatiable Volt Sisters by Rachel Eve Moulton, which I have. I'm assuming this is gonna be in the lowest. Around or under 500 seems like a low amount. So this is a potential and we'll keep scrolling. Oh, there's another one with 253. That's The Housewoman by Adora Nwora. I wasn't planning on only picking things off of my physical TBR, but here we are. 2,000, 80,000, 20,000, 8,000, 800. Spin a Black Yarn by Josh Mallerman. I see some in the 1,000 range. We might have to go up to that. I see a couple I've DNF'd, but just haven't taken off of my list. 476 for The Secret to a Southern Wedding. This one, I believe, is a romance, maybe just like contemporary fiction. I do not own that, but I'll see if I can grab it. 10,000, 17,000. Bored to Death has 987. Full Moon Over Freedom has 742. Oh, Knock Knock Open Wide has 480. I was wondering if we were going to see another low one. And look, I own it. I have been itching to read this one. Okay, I'm just going to check. Let's see if anything else has dipped below those numbers. No, it looks like everything else is in the 1000 range at its smallest. Okay, that was easy. I have my four books here. <laughs> a romance, maybe. A horror a horror mythology, and then a thriller, I think. Ooh, fun. I'll check in with you when I start reading one of them. My library had The Secret to a Southern Wedding by Cynthia Williams available, so I went and grabbed it. I'm going to start out by saying I recognize I'm doing this book a disservice because I'm starting it on the same day I finished Parable of the Sower, which is just making it glaringly obvious like what phenomenal writing is and what average writing is, I'm not enjoying how this is written. And I think something interesting within this video is exploring why I think these books didn't get a lot of hype. And there's a plethora of reasons we can never really figure out what it was. Um, within romance, there's so much competition for lack of a better word. And I feel like in a lot of cases, the publisher is responsible for marketing their books and sometimes they're just going to choose their darlings and they're going to promote those so much more heavily, which in turn is going to make them more read. And then getting more read is going to find more readers. Success begets success. This author has published a good amount of books. There aren't any real blurbs by any other authors to be seen here that would help promote it. I also don't know based on the cover that you would automatically assume this is a romance compared to other things from this imprint. It looks more like women's fiction to me because we are focused on each character in this upcoming relationship in each chapter. But if you're on the publisher's website looking through all of the book covers, looking for a romance, you might not pick this one. Although there are also tons of romance books from them that like don't feature people at all. And if you look at the other books that they publish around the same time, the readership is pretty similar. There are some outliers that have significantly less or significantly more, but it's not shocking the amount of readers that this has. To me, it's reading almost like a cozy mystery. If you haven't read one, it may not feel that way to you, but there's just a lot of referencing like dark pasts that both of these characters' um, parents have experienced and just alluding to like dangerous things that have occurred. And it's to build character development. It's meant to give reason for why these two characters don't want their parents together or want their parents together. So we have our main character, Amani. She's a doctor and she comes back to her small hometown because her mother is unexpectedly getting remarried. She doesn't even know the guy and they're already engaged. And her mother's bringing her there to meet him, to get to know him and his family and support their nuptials. 
the guy that she's marrying has a son around the same age as Amani, also single. He is very much for the relationship because he has been there and witnessed it. And Amani is very reluctant. And because of both of their relationships with their parents and their former partners and the trauma that they've experienced, they have different views on their parents being together. So just the constant references to like, my parents did crime, my dad's a bad guy. It just feels like it's gonna build to like a murder mystery because so many cozy mysteries build this small town atmosphere and they just like have you getting to know everybody and all the local businesses and they allude to all of these like dangerous things and then there's a dead body that's found. It also feels like not the first book in a series, it feels like the sequel to a cozy mystery because the way that they're referencing things feels like they're referencing a book that I should have read. I'm not an author, I'm not an editor. I know that I have read this done better, but I can't explain why or how, but just the way that she is inserting these moments is supposed to give us backstory. Like, oh, this reminds me of that time that my dad killed that guy. But just the way that it's structured feels like I'm supposed to know more about it than I do. Like the book is trying to remind me of an event that I already know all the context for. Our love interest is Cyril, I think it's pronounced. And they are lusting over each other, but they're about to become step siblings. So they're like, that's totally inappropriate. And I don't like either of them. I feel like she, like reasonably because of her past, um, is very cynical. She's very judgmental. And I just don't like being in her head. And it is going to follow her journey of coming to terms with her mom getting remarried, obviously. And I'm going to want to root for everybody in here. It's just right now, a third of the way in, I'm really struggling with it. It's a new day, which is not a good sign if you're new here. Uh, if I'm reading a romance book from, it takes me more than a day to read a romance book. Like that's just, it's not a good sign. I read a 600 page fantasy in a day, not too long ago. I should definitely be getting through this faster, but I am just realizing there's actually a short story in here. The last 50 pages is something else. So I'm actually closer to the end than I thought. I wanted to figure out where I originally heard of this. So I was looking at my screenshots and I found it. Cause anytime I see a book here about a book for the first time, something grabs my attention, either who mentioned it or the author or the cover, I'll just screenshot it for later. I originally heard about it from my friend Brie on Twitter. She retweeted the announcement one year ago to the day. Like, how freaky is that? I only have two of my friends who have read it on Goodreads. They both gave it three stars and I feel like that's where I'm going to end up with it. And I hate it because I feel like I'm being overcritical. I read a book recently where I hated the main character because she was too happy and now I feel like I hate the main character because she's too critical. But in reality it's me. I'm being too judgy towards my protagonist lately I think. It's just not enjoyable to read from these characters. I'm spending so much time with them and I don't like their personalities. <laughs> so I would like to stop reading. I think as with a traditional Hallmark movie, she, after revisiting this small town, is going to decide to move there and open a practice um, and be a doctor there because there's this character, um, a trans character, which is a great inclusion um, to have diversity in your story, who is pregnant in the small town and not getting the care that he deserves. So she is going to step in and help out a little bit advocating and I think she's going to end up moving there um, because of all of these factors, including like the romance that's budding, though I still, I don't feel it, I don't like it, but that's where I'm at. Sorry for the low quality late night update. It's midnight, I finally finished it. I'm gonna give it a 2.75. Not great for the first book in the video because you wanna kick it off with positive vibes, but um, I don't think this is a diamond in the rough. There obviously is an audience for every book and there are more people who could find this and enjoy it than already have. But obviously at the rating I'm giving it, I'm not screaming from the rooftops for everybody to go read. But also I'm not a predominantly romance reader. So what do I know? What I do know, cover, stunning. Like the colors, I love everything about it. I'm kind of glad the guy wasn't on the cover because I might not have picked it up if it depicted him as the book did, which was um, with a fedora on in every scene. You're not gonna convince me that that's sexy. I originally wanted to read this one. The reason I screenshotted it to begin with when all of the romance, there's so much romance that shows up in my feed, is because it had to do with the wedding. 
but it wasn't like the fun wedding planning type of book because Imani is just trying to end the wedding before it begins. She's trying to sabotage it. She's trying to get her mom to call it off. There was a lot of emotions. There was a lot of depth to the characters, which is great. But again, people call this a rom-com. Reviews say that it's funny and I don't see it. What I do think it has going for it is it's a very atmospheric small town. It's got that perfect setup for companion series where every business and every person we got introduced to is going to have their own little romance to follow. At the end of the day, literally it's the end of the day, you can't convince me that these characters that we were following are pushing 40. I don't believe it. I hate when a conflict is solved in one quick conversation, but they had to completely disrupt like three people's lives first. It was too predictable. It was too simplistic. There was no steam. So that's where my rating is landing. I hope the next one goes better. Today's read is The Insatiable Volt Sisters by Rachel Eve Moulton. It's not surprising the readership of this because Tinfoil Butterfly didn't like pop off. It's not like there was a super successful book by an author and then her follow-up didn't get any attention. This has like a similar amount of ratings as this if you look at the trajectory of the book. It's been out for four years, it's been out for one, and it has four times the amount of readers. This author's books are hard to pin down, so I think maybe people find it hard to recommend. They, I say they, I only read this one and I've started this one, I've read a couple chapters, and I wanna say they appeal to my weird light horror sensibilities. Is that the right way to phrase that? I don't know. There is some weird like gothic hallucinatory vibes, fairy tale almost to it. I know a good chunk of people read this because of me in 2021 when I read it. That's not like an, a pompous thing. That's like a factual, a good amount of people who do like booktuber favorites every year in 2021, the book they selected for me was this. I've seen a lot of people's opinions on this and it's been a complete range of reactions. I loved it. I gave it five stars. I think it was just really interesting. And now this one is about sisters and or they're half sisters and they grew up on this island together but then one of them left. I think pretty early in their life to go live with their mother off the island. The other one stayed with or her mother, and then their father stayed on the island with one of the sisters. And now, what, like 2010, sorry, years later, the father has died and the estranged sister is returning to the island. We have multiple perspectives over multiple years. I think there has been three so far. When I originally read the first chapter of this in the reading the first chapter of everything on my TBR video, I can't remember actually what I gave the first chapter, but I will put the footage here for proof of my rating, whatever it was. This one I'm landing at an eight. I already have so many questions in the first chapter. Okay, um, I feel like it was kind of high, like maybe a eight or nine. There are secrets and rumors about this island and people don't want other people to go to it. While his funeral is going on, there's actually like a celebration event ceremony happening unrelated to him. So it just gives the island this also um, mysterious, unsettling quality. So that's fun. Don't really know how to talk about any plot points, which I also felt with Tinfoil Butterfly. It was more about the vibe. So hopefully I'll have um, more to say when I get to like the halfway point. Sorry I lied to you. It's midnight and I'm done with the book. At the halfway point, I was like, I need to update the people, but I had nothing to say. I don't know. I still don't know what to say about this book. The plot of it, besides these women coming back together, these sisters, is there are women who have gone missing on the island over time. Um, they're coming to understand why. Uh, they're coming to understand their relationship with each other because they both have very different relationships with the island. They're coming to understand their father's protection over the island, um, why he had such rigid expectations of them. There's definitely a haunted atmosphere. It's more um, fantasy horror than I think Tinfoil Butterfly was. Motherhood and pregnancy took a little bit of the focus, so there's some of that. The last third was my favorite part, but the second third dragged so much that I was just exhausted by the time we got to that point that it didn't have as much of an impact as I wanted. Like even though I was liking things, the dreamy atmosphere, getting all the questions answered, I was tired of reading it. And it's not that I read it so quickly. Like my first update for you was 12 hours ago. No, 14 hours ago. I took a lot of breaks. I put it down, picked it up, 
a lot. Um, it reminds me of my feelings while I was reading Dead 11, um, They Drown Our Daughters, and Into the Water. Very water-focused stories that have so many elements that I enjoyed while I was reading them, um, but they just couldn't get to like a four star. And it's hard for me to express why, because they have this like gothic atmosphere that I like, this weird unexplained, um, fantastical element, surrealist element, I guess. I really like Rachel Eve Moulton's writing. I think uh, conceptually, it's just like a little um, basic. Her characters, I think people, um, might struggle to get on board with. They're just like a little exhausting to read. And if you're somebody who doesn't like a lot of POVs and finds character voices to be really similar amongst them, I wouldn't recommend this one. The audiobook does help distinguish everybody, like technically, because there's I think four different narrators, but I gave up on that one really quickly because they all sounded the same anyway. But maybe that's just because of the speed that I listen to audiobooks, because I don't want to listen to an audiobook slower than I would naturally read with my eyes, and I read with my eyes really quickly. Anyway, it was just okay. I think a 3.75 to be aggressively specific, as is the trend with this video, and I'll see you tomorrow with the next one. I was just about to film a clip, but my husband's back. Oh my God. Thank you. What'd you get? Today's family day in BC and we're going bowling. Bowling? Yeah. Sick. We must practice before he goes bowling at school. Exactly. Oh, that's spicy. It's good. Spicy? I got him gingerbread. They still had it. I'm reading Housewoman today. A novel. Adora Noira. Something like that. Um, I was thinking about this for a Literally Dead book club pick, but it doesn't have an audiobook. It's not super accessible. It's not available in like every country. So, and I think maybe that's something that's hurting its like readership is that it's not widely available. Um, I don't think I've seen anybody really promoting this. I heard about it super randomly on a book list of upcoming like thriller suspense stuff years ago. So, I like cover. Me too. It's cool. Anyway, I'll talk to you after we're bowling. So today we learned that uh, none of us are good at bowling. I thought maybe I used to be good at bowling, but alas. We had a good time. Now I'm reading my book, a hundred pages in. It is about this woman from Lagos who has been, um, there's an arranged marriage, but he, both of them didn't really know like what was going on. So one day she just shows up in his house and his parents are like, this is your new wife. As long as basically she gets pregnant within the month. The parents are very involved. Um, they're very much pressuring her and they're like you have to do this this is your only shot to um be with our son and do whatever it takes and they're like talking about um their actual sexual activity like here's what we recommend like here's how to here's what he's like and here's what you're gonna do with him it is icky um she also is experiencing these blackouts where she has violent tendencies so i'm definitely hooked i don't know what's gonna come of this plot but I'm intrigued. Come on. <laughs> I have not been a good vlogger this week. Um, I'm already done the book. It was fast. Like this is shorter than it appears. And it was very good, but I, I don't know if you should read it. I wish this author all the success. Apparently there is an audiobook, just not in my country. And it didn't come out until like a year after the original publication date. But the 3.3 average rating that it has, like, I get it. And that rating is obviously not inspiring more people to pick it up, but I don't think that my 4.5 should either. It gets weird. It gets, or it is nasty and not like disgusting horror grossness, like relationship and hygiene grossness. It's an interesting story because this woman whose name I'm so sorry, I cannot pronounce. I looked up a pronunciation for it and I still just don't think that I am processing how it's pronounced. But I also don't want to go this review not saying the main character's name. So Ikeme Funa, I, something like that. Um, she is in a difficult situation. She 
has gotten into something that she did not entirely consent to and she's trying to get out of it throughout the book and nobody is taking her seriously. Not to mention she's in an unfamiliar country and that makes things entirely more difficult. But also there's this duality with the character, like she's trying to um, find assistance out of her situation, but she's also just like trying to work with what she has. And in many cases, she's like bubbly and sensual and just like trying to make things work. Some people have called this, uh, referred to it as a dark comedy, which I kind of get. I think my favorite thing about this is it features other character POVs, like random, a random neighbor and a random guy at a gas station and their perception of this family. It feels like a neighborhood drama at times. This family very much keeps to themselves for a reason and finding everything out towards the end was definitely like outside of the realm of realism. It was a little over the top and ridiculous, which is something that I like. This definitely goes on my list of lowly rated books by the masses that I feel like just haven't found their audience yet. And I know the people are out there. I don't know that I have any specific comp titles for this one. Like I would definitely struggle with trying to think if you loved this, you should read this. And I'm gonna read my last book for the vlog. Good morning, it's 6 a.m. I got four hours of sleep, but I have my own personal spotlight. Today, I'm gonna read over the next hour and a half while Liam's at hockey practice, knock, knock, open wide. The fun part about this is I've completely forgotten the synopsis at this point. I know I've talked about it a couple times. I've read it out loud, I'm sure, but I have no idea at this point what it's about. I remember it having something to do with Irish folk, Lore? I think it's like horror fairy tale vibes. Of the four that I'm reading in this video, this came out the most recently, so it makes sense the lower readership. But also, it's from Tor, and I feel like it should have a higher readership. Maybe it like hasn't been promoted as much as other things. I know I just found out about it because I was literally on their website looking at upcoming releases. And this one also doesn't have an audiobook, which I'm sure isn't helping, which is weird because it's from Tor. I feel like most of Tor's stuff gets audiobooks. The cover's incredible. The title's incredible. To me, this is like a five-star prediction for no real reason. So let's crack into it. takes place like in her car in the fog in the rain and that's the vibe oh i don't like it i'm now remembering the synopsis which is um attain finds a corpse on a pitch black road deep in the irish countryside she takes the corpse to a remote farmhouse so begins a night of unspeakable horror that will take her to the very brink of sanity like what are you talking about So we've jumped ahead in time. We are now 20 years in the future and following the daughter of um, the woman who did the, un or experienced the unspeakable things at this farmhouse. It was all very like vaguely frightening and I really liked it. But now we're in the future and we're following her daughter and she's just going to college and is meeting this girl and they're gonna start dating. And like, she's trying to keep her away from like her mother because her mother has issues because clearly she went through something 20 years ago. And so I'm deep into that storyline and I don't, I wanna get back to like, the weirdness, but flipping forward and just skimming like the chapter titles, it seems like we're in so many years. Like we don't go back to 1979, we're in like 1984 and then 2001 and then 2003. And I just like, I, I want to have already read this book so I can know like what the fuck the plot even is. I feel like it's going to feel frustrating, but then it's also gonna feel like um, satisfying by the end. I don't know. 
I haven't gotten too much further. I'm trying to get a lot of work done today, but I just wanted to update you. I am at the halfway point and I'm really liking it. Like really liking it. I'm so interested in where it's going to go. There's been talk of this children's TV show called Puckeen, I think, that is basically these people on the screen who learn life lessons via the threat of this ominous, like, I don't know, puppet or something in a box. They're always referencing the box and like, Puckeen's going to come out and get you if you don't do what you're supposed to do. But then the show, every single episode, the puppet or the mat, whatever the heck he is, never actually comes out of the box. So it's like um, their main character of this show, no one has ever seen. But then throughout the pages, we find out that different people have seen it differently. Like they have different memories of the show than others. As long as this doesn't turn into like a haunted puppet book, like I can't, at this point I would die. I love the writing of this. I'm so invested and I just want it to stay like perfect. If I tell you my honest rating of this and give it a five, loudly and proudly, will you promise to not then take it as a recommendation and everyone goes and reads it and then they're like, that wasn't good and Kayla's the reason I read it? Because I just feel like that could happen with this one. It's not super niche weird horror, but I also don't think that its current average rating of like, a 3.9 on Goodreads is accurate. I would expect it, and maybe like in the future when more people get their hands on it, I would expect it to be more in the territory of like, we'll fact check me in a second, but like the women could fly or um, book eaters or Haunting of Alejandra. Not that these are comps plot wise, even um, follow me to ground. I wanna say these all hover around a 3.6. Ding, ding, ding. Dang, killed it, crushed it. Who am I? Books that definitely have an audience but aren't being promoted by like, you know, all the horror girlies. It also kind of reminded me of T. Kingfisher and Sarah Gately, even their books that I didn't necessarily love just because of the generational stuff. It's a generational family trauma, drama, oh my God. Well, it is about trauma, but it's a generational family drama meets folk horror. I don't think you have read anything quite like this before, but you also might not like it. There is, it's kind of slow. It's a lot about this relationship development. There are a lot, a lot of characters introduced, especially as the book continues that don't really matter. Keep in mind, it is like a sapphic relationship at the forefront of this and it's written by a man. So that might be a reason you personally don't want to pick it up. I know that's an opinion of some people. Um, it is explicit I guess, um, what kind of example could I give? Okay, if you, <laughs> if you hmm, were um, outraged by Colleen Hoover's reference to, we both laughed together at our big balls, you may also be concerned about the phrasing um, my girlfriend and her mother have the same colored nipples. Just so you know what kind of territory we're covering here. She doesn't see her nipples for like a nefarious or sexual reason. Um, so maybe that comforts you. It's disorienting. It's weird. It is about this children's TV show. Um, I feel like actually it reminded me a little bit of Kirsten White's writing already and Hyde specifically, which again, I didn't like, but maybe it actually has a lot in common with her latest book that I don't plan on reading. The characters are super interesting to me. I think they do have some weird characteristics, like some of them have some unchecked prejudice takes on people and groups that are just very quickly mentioned and thrown away. But I will absolutely be championing an audiobook of this because as I learned, some books just don't get an audiobook when they first come out. It takes a while to see if they are loved um, by the community. I would read this again. I would love to listen to the audiobook if Tor is listening. Uh, I think Maybe a reason that it doesn't have an audiobook right from the beginning is it's a debut. And I think personally, you should have like multiple or like a full cast in here. One main narrator who has to be Irish, obviously, for just the language involved. And I would just love to listen to the accent and everything feeling so authentic. Um, but also there are articles and interviews that you would have to have a man 
be a part of for the audiobook to read well. So maybe investing that much in a debut is like not something that they always do. I don't really know. Technically, I feel like I'm here to promote this and I, I want the audiobook and I want more people to read it and I'll tell you all about it when and if it comes out. But at the same time, like, I don't, I don't know if this is going to be everybody's darling. I loved it. I really loved it. The writing, oh my god, the writing of this and the creepy scenes, it wasn't scary. Um, just very like odd and an odd just series of events over and over again that you have to piece together. It's also not just like this big grand reveal. The ending doesn't go, oh my god, gasp, plot twist. So I don't know who I'm recommending this to specifically, but those are my thoughts on it. My battery's gonna die. This is the end of the video. Quick outro. Two books I really liked. Uh, two books that were under a four. They definitely have an audience, but um, well, actually, these are all. I, I really looking at them at this point, having read them, like I get why none of them have become huge mega successes, which I don't think is mean to say because like obviously I've, I loved some of these. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in another vlog probably in a couple days. Bye.